All this information is going into the final report, which MEMFMA will be issuing to the stakeholders. Uh, they'll control the issue of, uh, of the final, final data, and all this will be available. But across the board, uh, across Dubai, the average from our surveys was 13.05 uh, per square foot. And I'll break it up into some of the categories to give you an idea. Uh, villa communities was 3.38, I think. Uh, residential blocks, 13.42. Okay, with the villas, with the charts, now obviously insurance, it's very hard, you might not be able to read those colour codes, but you know, less than 1% in the villas is spent on insurance. Maintenance, 50% in a villa community, and when you look at a villa community, it's all common area, roadways, uh, paths, uh, gardens, uh, entrances, fences, uh, fountain features, etc., etc. Well, 50% of their charge goes into maintenance. That's, by the way, this is a sample size of two. So, I mean, don't get too excited about the figures. If we could, if we could uh, get a lot more, I'm certain it'd be a little bit more meaningful. 8% uh, on management services. Uh, utilities, 8%. You'd expect that to be low in a master community because you're not your utilities uh, are more paid for by the owners who own the particular lots within the, that community. Um, master community charges, 33% in a, uh, a gated community. So that again is interesting. I don't know whether that is really representative. As I said, sample size of two. I'd like to have at least, say, 10 in there where we could get a, a better idea. But the two significant costs are um, master community charges and maintenance. I'm not going to make any political statements about who's charging too much. Reserve fund contributions, 1%. And again, I think that figure will change because people are doing estimates in regard to reserve fund forecasting, whereas the law requires a proper study over a 10-year period. I, I think you'll find that that 1% will increase a little bit. And when you look at the residential uh, results, you'll see where obviously the reserve funds are much, the requirements are much higher because of the complexity of the buildings. Move on to residential. Insurance is now 2%. Obviously, you're, you're, you're insuring a major asset, which is a building, and that's the premium you're paying there, by the way, that's 2%. Your maintenance, 39%. You'd expect that to be the major component because of the large assets, the MEP, etc. And, and, the, and the various uh, mixed-use component, or not the mixed-use component, components, but the, the, the types of facilities that are provided requires considerable amount of maintenance. Again, the management's not too different to the villa communities. 8% uh, on villas, 9% in residential. Um, utility costs, 38%. You know, common areas, uh, a lot more common areas, a lot more chilled water lot more electricity to common areas in residential buildings, so you'd expect that figure to be reasonably high compared, say, to villas. Master community charges, um, smaller footprint on the building, so therefore you wouldn't expect to see uh, much higher than that. But that was across, say, 34 budgets, so I suppose you could take something away from that. And uh, reserve fund contribution, as I said, would the provision needs to be much higher because we're looking at... Uh, a, um, a, a much more uh, a different mix of, of structures that need to be maintained and replaced. There's much more equipment in residential than there is in, in gated communities. If you look at mixed use, insurance again, significant 1%. Again, maintenance, 31%. Management, 9 Management is consistent across the survey, 8 9%. Uh, utilities, 37%, not too dissimilar to residential. Master community charges, 12%. And I suppose if the only, uh, the only thing you could take away from this figure is a lot of these uh, mixed-use buildings are in large master communities instead of sitting on individual plots. And so you're paying a, a fair component of master, master community charge. Uh, reserve fund, again, that 8 or 9% that compares similarly to the residential. 
Okay, <clears throat> so I probably got the more boring part, the facilities management part on minimum service level, so let me go through that for you. Um, so what we were requested by Arira was to uh, look at a minimum set of service levels for the, uh, for the owners associations in particular. So uh, I want to stress the point that this is a minimum set of recommendations. This isn't a benchmark. This isn't, you know, um, um, Australian standards or British standards or US standards. This is a minimum service levels that, that uh, we've designed here. So what we wanted to ensure, as I said, was that we uh, provide that for owners associations but also for service providers in the industry as well. We wanted to introduce key performance indicators also for the supervision because the supervision model will obviously change with the owners associations and the strata laws. We wanted to use this as a basis for those OAs to tender the services because they're now going to be the principals of those contracts. We also wanted to ensure there was some compliance obviously with statutory requirements uh, and it's important to note that the, the recommendations don't supersede any of those local laws, regulations as well. So what we did, as we said, is we provided these uh, service levels for uh, all the stakeholders, so owners associations, managers, service providers. The uh, minimum levels are re recommended, obviously, to enhance the asset value, and obviously, at, at the moment, all the owners associations want to see those decreases, but you know, to what extent? Uh, obviously, when it starts to impact health and safety, the, the life cycle of the asset as well, uh, there's some issues there. So we want to inform, educate the stakeholders of uh, industry benchmarks. Um, and as I said, this is um, the recommended levels. This isn't the, the, the highest levels. We want to also stress the point that the owners association should always contract to specialised providers. Um, there's a lot of people out there saying they do certain services, but are they licensed for those services? Can they actually do those services? Uh, it's important that the service levels, the SLAs, obviously are monitored and measured uh, and carried out by professionals. Uh, and when I go into the, the sample, you'll see how we've done that. And as I said, the, the SLAs do not supersede the, the local laws, regulations or mandates in whichever emirate it may be. Okay, so what we did is we split the service levels into to subcategories. Um, HVAC, so air conditioning, uh, mechanical, uh, electrical, plumbing, Specialised services, so we put these separate, so fire, lifeguards, uh, swimming pool maintenance, um, civil work, so fabrication, painting, cleaning, uh, waste management we separated, obviously, um, because that's a more specialised area. Landscaping services, pest control uh, and security. So we, we didn't split those into areas because, you know, each company looks after those separate, separate subcategories. You know, you may have some uh, providers out there that have multiple licences, but we split those because they're more specialised areas under FM. So what we did is we uh, split the SLAs, um, uh, the actual document, into five different sections, and I'll just take you through a sample of that. Obviously, the whole report is uh, going to MEFMA, uh, and we'll talk about the recommendations next. So as you can see here, uh, we split it into the task, which is pretty straightforward. So here it's uh, man security or security um, services. Then we talk about the, the frequency. So for here, um, you know, there's a lot of tasks that take place under a security agreement, being daily, weekly, monthly tasks. Um, if I were to put up um, HVAC here, you'd have you know, monthly, quarterly, uh, half yearly, yearly maintenance. Uh, most FMs know that. What we did then is we actually went into the tasks. Um, we're not being overly prescriptive here, but we're being descriptive enough so that the owners associations or whoever's managing that contract can actually monitor that performance. Um, it's very important this is a performance-based SLA. This isn't a you know, must-have 0.5 manpower per square foot. Um, what we've also done there is we've put a minimum service level. So what is the threshold, the minimum threshold that that service should be provided? So for security, how many of those patrols were carried out? Uh, how many of those reports were submitted on time to the manager? Um, and then obviously the measurement method. So most of that is through monthly reporting. Some of it's through spot checks that are done as well. Um, we haven't gone uh, overly onerous on the service levels. Um, I've seen contracts that are 300 pages on service levels. Um, the idea is that the OA or the OA manager can actually run this contract. 